Hello everyone, and welcome to another Pathfinder Adventure card game. This is scenario 5.4. We're with the character Drum over at the crypt. We're at this location. The difficulty of checks against banes that have the cold or undead trait is increased by 3 plus the scenario's adventure deck number. So that's going to mean plus 8 check to defeat. Wow, for undead. Alright, well this is Drum's fifth time through the crypt. This campaign, he only has one more time through that crypt to go. Advancing is the Blessings deck. It's a Blessing of Osiris. And our first exploration, we get Yellow Jelly. Okay, Ooze, Acid Basic, does not have the Undead trait. Uh, it's immune to Mental, Piercing, Poison, and Slashing traits. Uh, if the check to defeat has the Acid or Cold trait, add 3. After you act, if the result of the check to defeat is greater than 12, you're dealt 1d4 acid damage. Well, Drone really likes his hand. He doesn't have any armors. And he doesn't want to take that after you act. Well, fortunately, he has the Death Grip spell, which not only does it have the cold trait, which is great against the jelly, but we can ignore any non-villain monster's power that happens after you act. So Death Grip is a total of the arcane skill which is d8 for drum plus six and he gets two additional dice so six seven eight nine so this is already an auto defeat oh pretty sweet and that bane is going to get banished for the rest of the campaign we're going to roll to see if uh and of course it has we can ignore any non-villain monsters power that happens after you act rolling to recharge the spell and we do we rolled an eight so awesome, we recharge Death Grip. Well, so far this crypt is no problem for Drum. Advancing the Blessings deck, we get a Blessing of Matt. Exploring, we get Collapsing Sphinx. It's a Trigger Obstacle Sphinx. Well, since it's a trick or not an obstacle, Drum can automatically add his Divine Seal to this check. And his Dexterity, Stealth, Wisdom, Perception. Oh, so his Wisdom is also a d8. So, hmm, how about that? So basically, already our buffs, our wisdom buff is plus three, and our divine buff is plus six. So we're already adding nine to this roll. But we really, really, really want to make sure that we defeat this. So we're gonna use a blessed of Abdar, where we can add two dice to any check to defeat the barrier. So we're adding two d8. So uh, gathering my dice here, 48, adding a total of 9, so yeah, that makes it to 9, 10, 11, 12, yeah, that was an auto defeat, thanks to the blessing, so we don't have to deal with that, <clears throat> so thankful for that, uh, now we are advancing the blessing deck, we had to recharge drum's hand, okay, recharging drum's hand, advancing the blessing deck, and now we will examine, we find a filter hood, intelligence craft survival, or constitution fortitude. Okay, let's go ahead and roll constitution fortitude. We did not get the filter hood. It gets banished for the rest of the campaign since it's an elite card. All right, looking at Drum's hand, uh, looks, it uh, could be better, but we'll keep it. Advancing the blessings deck, it's a blessing of the elements, so we get a magnifying glass. All right, let's go ahead and roll, see if we acquire this, and we do. So we can recharge this card to examine the top card of your deck. Then you may shuffle your deck. Sure, let's do it. We are looking at, okay, we get the bird feather tokens. So then what we want to do when we reset Drum's hand, we're going to recharge the golden serpent armband. Or actually, we're going to toss it and draw the card that we just saw with the magnifying glass, which was Bird for their tokens. Advancing the Blessings deck, a Blessing of Matt. We get a Crocodile Skin Shield. Let's roll to see if uh, we get that, and we do. But we don't want it in our hand, so we're going to toss it. Actually, you know what? Uh, hmm. Maybe we do want this shield because we got a weapon. We don't have any armor. Um, uh, sure, we'll keep the Crocodile Skin Shield. Alright, uh, Advancing the Blessings deck, and we get the Curse of Fever Dreams. Wow, that's going to really suck. We get to explore, though, and we get a Blessing of Matt. 
Okay, so it's Divine Six. So the awesome thing about this card is since it's the Divine Six, we automatically acquire it. So then we can't use this blessing for an exploration. But what we can do is now that we got the Curse of Fever Dreams, we want to go ahead and use the Blessing of Nephis. Discard this card to examine the top two cards of your location deck. Put them back in any order, then explore your location. So we have to do that. So the first exploration is this guy, and the second exploration is this. Well, that's going to be pretty difficult, because now we have the Curse of Fever Dreams, which really sucks. So we use the Blessing of this, then we can explore our location. Okay, we're going to explore, and we find this Spell Sword. It's a level 4 weapon, so Drum is on level 5. He definitely wants to acquire this boon. So it's a melee check. Alright, well, Drum's melee has a buff of d10, and the buff is plus 3. Uh, so we'll do that. Alright, so we rolled a 9, plus 3 is 12, so we acquire the spell sword. Do, 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 do. And it says here we can recharge this card to recharge a random spell from your discard pile. Well, that's awesome. So we'll go ahead. To, we're going to go ahead and recharge the spell sword. There's only one spell in our uh, discard pile, which is... Oh, actually, no, we don't have any spells in our discard pile. So we'll just go ahead and uh, toss it, I guess. Alright, so now we have to deal with the Curse of Fever Dreams, unfortunately. So we are resetting our hand. So we have to recharge our hand. And when we recharge the hand... What we have to do is roll 1d4 plus 1 cards. So we get 3 plus, so we do get 4 cards, so thankfully we get that. Doesn't really help out that much. Alright, so now what we're doing is we are going to advance the Blessings deck. We know what card this is, it's that Undead Menace. And we really don't have a lot. Uh, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to pass on our first exploration because we know what's coming up. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're just going to discard this card to explore our location. During this exploration, add 1d8 to your combat checks. So we'll do that. We'll discard her. We know what we got here. But already we're adding 1d8 to our combat check. Thanks to Commander Abdallah. So this Undead Menace has a total of plus 8 modifier to defeat since it's in the crypt. So it's immune to mental and poison traits. If the check to defeat has the divine trait, add 1d6. Uh, well, we are going to be using a blessing. We're going to use a blessing of Phrasma on this check. But as it is, it's just going to be a straight up melee check because Drone doesn't have any weapons. So the melee check is d10. The blessing of Phrasma is going to give us another d10. And our melee skill is a plus 3 buff. So that's all we got. That's pretty cool. It's pretty good. Thanks to Commander Abdallah and the Blessing. Let's see what we got. Alright, so we rolled a 9, 10, and a 6, and a 1. Wow. Pretty bad roll. We needed 21. Did we get it? 6, 7, 8, and 9, and 17, 18, 19, 20. Wow. So we failed by 1, but fortunately we have a stained glass elemental. So the way I'm playing it, even though I'm using like two allies, technically, one I just used for an exploration, so that wasn't part of the check. And this one, I'm saying, I can use it for the check. So if so, and if I'm using that rule right, you can let me know. But I'm not using two allies on this check, because the first one's just for an exploration, and this one's for the combat check. So when I recharge this stained glass elemental, I can buff up my roll to one and defeat the the tech in you all right so that's how i played it let me know how that worked i think i followed all the rules correctly i am a rule stickler okay so we reset our hand and then unfortunately we thanks to the curse of fever dreams we have to recharge our hand and now we have to roll to see how many cards we get back and okay we get five cards nice and Drelm has a hand size of 5. So there's that. Okay, advancing the Blessings deck. 
There are two cards left in the Blessings deck, and there's three cards left in the Location deck. First thing we're going to do is remove Curse. Uh, we charge this card to banish the Curse of Fever Dreams. That Curse of Fever Dreams is a nightmare. Then we're going to go ahead and cast Sands of Time, so we can add one die to any check against the Undead trait. Uh, then I'm not really liking the cards I got, but we're going to go for it anyway. We're going to explore. Okay, we have a Flame Staff. So this is an auto acquire. So it's for your combat check, recharge this card and discard a spell to use your arcane or divine skill plus 1d8. This counts as playing a spell. I mean, it's pretty lame at this stage in the game of the campaign. So we're going to toss the flame staff, we're going to toss the death grip spell, we're going to recharge our hand, or I'm sorry, reset our hand. Now we will advance the blessing sec, blessing of the elements, and we will explore. It's the evil eye. So, the difficulty to defeat is increased by twice the Scenario's Adventure deck number, so that's 10. So we need to roll a 16 here. Um, we did not examine this card. It's a Trigger Curse Arcane Veteran. Alright. So what we need to do is do a Stealth Knowledge Arcane Divine. So it's going to be a Divine check, because Drone's Divine is D8 plus 6. So that means we still got to do a 16. So straight up, just like that, we're not going to make it. Huh. So that really sucks. Um, hmm. Wow, we need a 16. Our divine skill, our buff for the divine is plus 6, but that's not going to make it. Yeah, I don't think, uh, I actually don't think we can make this check. How about that? Drum is the Vault Keeper, looking at his powers. I don't have anything that has the Abdar trait. Uh, it's not a uh, construct, it's not undead. So this is an auto fail, unfortunately. So it's an auto fail, we have to suffer a scorch. Ouch. Okay, so the scorch die for level 5. Let's go ahead and check the rules real quick. So scorch die for level 5 is going to be a D8 plus 1. So we're rolling a D8 here. So we get a 5 plus 1 is a 6. And we get the Curse of Withering. Alright, so the Evil Eye gave us a Curse of Withering. That really sucks. And there was nothing we could do about it. So now, Drum is adding the Curse of Withering to his hand. And checking out the... We are going to go ahead and use our Magnifying Glass. We're going to recharge that. To look at the top card of our hand. It's a Maga Three Fingers. Who's going to be useful. So we'll uh, definitely keep her and we will reset our hand all right so the, the final card in the blessings deck is a blessing of the ancients and our final exploration is dun, da, da, the villain all right so it's immune to the mental and poison traits if the check to defeat does not have the magic trait the canopic soul is undefeated well fortunately we have a magical neutron fang in our hand before you act, the Canopic Soul deals each character at your location one mental damage that may not be reduced. And then after you act, it's going to deal 1d4 mental damage. Okay, well we can survive all that. So for the damage, we're going to go ahead and just uh, lose the Mystic Cloak. It doesn't stop uh, mental damage, so we just take it as damage. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and, since this has the Undead trait, the check to defeat is actually going to be by plus 8. So we've got a plus 8. So we need to roll a 32. A whopping 32. Alright, so we're going to use the Natron Fang. It's assembling our dice. It's our strength and melee plus 1d8 plus 1. If the Bane has the Undead trait, we can add 2d8 and the Bludgeoning trait. Okay, so here's what we're doing. So we got our strength die and the d8 thanks to the Natron Fang and we get to add Another 2d8. Uh, then we have, hmm, well, we got uh, the bird feather tokens. We got Leslie Kepri and Maga Three Fingers. Well, Curse of Withering says we have to replace our highest die with the next lowest die. And we also have a Sands of Time spell, thankfully. So the Sands of Time spell, they don't want to forget that, that gives us an additional d8. Okay, and we got to use this one. Okay, so we just have 
uh, 5d8, so possible 40 there. We need a total of 32. Let's see what we get. All right, so we get, that is a one. I don't know if you can see that, but that's a one. So one, six, eight, five, seven. Well, this is a great roll. Let's see, is that over what we need? So we need a 24, 32. So this is 15, 20, 26, 27. Ouch. Well, fortunately, we have the blessing of Capri. So we can turn that one into a six. So was that enough? So 12, 20, and then 32. This is 24, 12, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 32. Wow, so 32 there. Let me double check. Is that 32? 12, 20, 27, 29, 33. 30. Wow, how about that? Thanks to the blessing of Kepri, we have defeated the Canopic Soul. Wow, that was, we had all the right buffs. Sands of Time, some great cards. But we still take 1d4 mental damage. That may not be reduced. So that means we took 4 points of damage. We have to discard our entire hand. When we reset our hand, uh, fortunately, we have 5 cards. So we have 5 cards. The Canopic Soul is banished. And this location is closed. All right, let's go ahead and do a deck check here. Let's check out the reward. That was a really cool scenario. I mean, so far, level five has been uh, pretty cool. The first adventure was great. Second adventure, uh, you know, and third, not so much. But this adventure, man, this adventure rocked. Okay, so the reward for this scenario for Drelm is a... Da -da -da. It's a skill feat. And we get the Pharaoh's key. So we get the Pharaoh's key. We'll put that down there. We're going to do a deck check here. And Drelm gets a skill feat. So we're just, uh, our uh, original plan, zoom in here, is to do, do, do a little more. Okay, so we want to just max out Drelm's strength. So he is all totally maxed out in strength. He's all maxed out in wisdom. I think he gets one more skill feat. So we'll probably bump up his charisma. But that's just where I'm feeling right now. So that's done. Let's look at the deck now. So zoom back out. Okay, so we got an item. Great spell. Probably one, probably one of my favorite spells at Sands of Time. And here's uh, the state of Drum's deck. He's got a lot of cool stuff here. That blessed the mat. Was it fortuitous? The magnifying glass. That actually helped out. I like that magnifying glass, so it was cool that he was able to find that in the crypt. It's cool finding just useful one-shot things that characters aren't going to keep, because you never know what's going to help you out. Look at the spell sword. What a cool find. And we toss that. So drone has got a whole bunch of cool stuff here. So, let's see. And, of course, with that Pharaoh's key. So he's going to go ahead and go to a trader. I mean, look at his spells. He's got these... He could definitely use a better spell. And we're on level 5. So let's go ahead and go to the trader Hadron Hopper, who does offer spells. He would like to get that Dune of Dune spell. I mean, he traded it for the Axe of the Imperative. But wouldn't that be cool if he got it back? So, shuffling cards here. Randomly looking at the spells. So we can either get the... He's offering the Sirocco spell, since that's level 5. He's offering the Dune of Dune. It's back. Or uh, we're on level 5. Or channel the gift. Okay. So Hayden Hopper says, look, here are the spells that I'm offering you. All right. We don't want to channel the gift. That's more for uh, searching for spells. So the Sirocco or Dune of Dune. Sirocco is we can use our Arcane or Device Skills plus 3d8. Uh, da, da, da. Wow, I didn't know it had all these effects. And you may examine the top two cards of your location deck. But I think we just want to get back to the Dune of Doom. So that's what we're going to do. We want the Dune of Doom. So we say, tell Hayden Hopper, look, we're going to give you... You want a level four boon? So we're going to give... Well, we want to keep that, actually. So we got the Spell Sword, right? So check that out. We got a Spell Sword to offer him. And we got a Pharaoh's Key right there. Boom. 
So we're going to offer him the Pharaoh's Key. Even though it's a nifty item. I mean, check out this nifty item here. And here. So there it is. Pharaoh's Key is pretty cool. I mean, I like it. But we're going to trade that and that for the Dune of Doom spell. That means we have to, to make some room, we either have to lose the Death Grip or the Corrosion spell. Probably Death Grip, because Corrosion, we can use that in a combat check. So, and of course, Drum has a lot of extra cards, which he will have to uh, get rid of to make his deck legal. I'm surprised Commander Abdallah does not have the Ab Abdar trait. That would have been really cool. Well, anyway, that's the state of Drum's deck. Uh, really exciting adventure. Thanks for watching. And I will have another adventure up shortly. All right, thank you.